Welcome to the Brand Gravity Show, where we explore the intersection between branding and psychology. I'm your host, psychology-driven brand strategist, Kay Putnam, and today I am interviewing, having a little chat with my good friend, fellow brand strategist, Phil Palin. Phil and I met years ago, and I have looked up to him ever since. I am so excited to have him on the show. We talk about going your own way, carving your own path, basically creating a business that is suited to who you uniquely are. And Phil has a lot of wise words to share about this. Phil Palin is a personal branding expert and keynote speaker. His non-conventional approach to digital marketing and talent for social media has built him a global audience. As a brand strategist, Phil has advised hundreds of brands from over 30 countries, including a shark on Shark Tank, a Nobel Peace Prize winner, politicians, and some of the most important names in entertainment. A digital nomad and globetrotter, Phil has delivered speeches on five different continents and frequently appears as an expert contributor in media outlets around the world, including CNN, Access Hollywood, and the Daily Mail. So without further ado, let's get into the interview. Who am I? I'm a brand strategist like you. You're one of my most inspirational friends. I basically just want to be Kay Putnam when I grow up. That's what's going on here. Yeah, I'm a brand strategist, so I help people and companies, but mostly people, position, build, and promote their brands. For the last five years, I've been on the road as a digital nomad. And then as of February, I'm back in the US. My partner is studying at Full Sail University. So we're here for two years. Uh, that's where I studied about 10 years ago, not to date myself, but I definitely have a lot more gray hair now. But it's kind of nice to be back. I have a wine fridge, Kay. I have an air fryer. I mean, <laughs> does life get better than that? I didn't have those things on the road and I'm thoroughly enjoying no. them. Yes. I mean, you come back to the States and you're blown away by all of the convenience and abundance and everything that's possible. What are you really excited about working on right now? Right now, I am excited about projects that I'm working on with Adobe. I, inspired by Kate Putnam, went more into YouTube about mm -hmm. two and a half years ago or almost three years ago. And I should actually credit a guy named Miner that I work with who helps me with my YouTube channel optimization and all the geeky stuff that I don't have the attention span for. I met him working actually on a client project of mine. He was working with one of my clients. He replied to my client when I sent over a little website tutorial. Hey, client, here's how you do this. And Miner said, can you give me his phone number or his email address? Because I think he would be perfect for YouTube. So Amazing. that's what kind of what ignited that and my desire to teach people how to do things and try cool tools and apps. And YouTube is fun because I get to satisfy that educator side of me. I love to teach things and try things and give little walk throughs of apps and tools and it's led to sponsored content. So that's a brand new vertical of my business that I'm really enjoying. Um, in addition to obviously working with clients, but working with brands like Adobe, I'll give you a little snapshot of that. Today I'm working with a nonprofit uh, on creating some systems for their Instagram and their online marketing strategy. Thanks to Adobe using Adobe Express. Yesterday I did an online workshop. Next week I'm doing a workshop in Ohio, like for Adobe with Meta, just like nice. cool things cooking. I get excited by new things. And the fact that I have mm -hmm. a new vertical in my business, I'm finding very exciting. That's amazing. And it's, I feel like that's such a great transition too, because I know that so much of your business has been built with speaking and yes. hopefully that's picking back up now, but it has been not that way, I imagine, for the well, last couple of years. It's funny you bring that up because my speaking has almost evolved into this. This is almost more yeah. Phil Palin than speaking, if you can believe it. Like speaking was a great way to travel. It was a great way to get across the world and share knowledge. And really, I mean, travel, I think for me, was like the yeah. main incentive more so than like a speaking fee or sometimes I wouldn't get a speaking fee. Sometimes it's just expenses covered and you know, mm -hmm. come speak in Dubai or come speak in Finland. And that's great. Um, but now people are so used to virtual that I don't think it's ever going to fully go back to in-person events. I think when people are in person, 
They really appreciate it. But for me now, the ease of being able to work with brands right from my desk and have that same global effect, obviously nothing replaces that like cultural immersion that you get with travel, but definitely mm -hmm. I'm putting more energy into speaking or into uh, brand partnerships than speaking nowadays. You're such a rock star. I love everything that you're doing. And um, I would be for remiss. the record, not to interrupt you, but I did interrupt you because that's how I feel about you. Continue. <laughs> Thank you. I would be remiss to not ask you about like actual brand strategy since, since you're here and I want everybody to benefit from your genius. What would you say is the one non-negotiable when you're building a brand for somebody else? The one non-negotiable I think is having clarity on your brand positioning. People mm -hmm. jump so quickly to wanting to stick a for sale sign out front of this house that they've staged or that they've built. But if the house doesn't have a roof, you're only going to get a fraction of the value that you deserve. So much of my people think what they need is like more followers on Instagram and it's not what they need. So often what they need is a revisiting of those early stages of the branding process, which for me is positioning your brand and then building something to show for it. We're too focused on that final stage that promote and it's important, but it's not everything. And so I would say the one non-negotiable is having clarity on how your brand is positioned and to make sure that it really truly aligns with whatever your business goal is. Final thought, branding isn't just about making something look pretty. It's really about branding being a business tool to help you move forward and actually achieve whatever it is you want to achieve in business. It could be a financial goal. It could be more value-based, like attaining more freedom. So you have to have clarity around that in order to do anything productive. Heck yes. My goodness. Just need to replay that part again and again and again for everybody in the back just to get people excited about it. What kinds of results are possible when you go back to that basis of clarity before you jump into everything else? I think maybe one of the things we see when someone is sure about the way their brand is positioned, which by the way, is achieved more times than not with help from someone like you or someone like me, essentially yeah. an outsider. You want an outsider for this process. Uh, you mm -hmm. don't want someone who's intimately familiar with your business. That's your job. It's your business. You're the one in the trenches, not me, not Kay. You're in the trenches. You really need someone to hold up a mirror and say, hey, yeah. I don't really know you. And that's good for this exercise because since I don't know you, here's what I'm seeing. Here's the first impression of you. Here's what I'm gathering from you. Have you thought about this little tweak? Or have you thought about highlighting this awesome thing about you? And sometimes it's just those little pivots. It's not, you know, a brand position. It doesn't necessarily mean you're going to like switch from life insurance to skydiving. It's not drastic. <laughs> sometimes it's just one little reaffirming moment or slight change pivot or focus, I'd say, on a, let's say a certain audience. And sometimes I, I think the result of that is like seeing someone light up, seeing someone be more confident in how they show up online. And I think if that's, if that's the outcome, then essentially we've done our job. You know, if someone feels mm -hmm. really good about how their brand is positioned, they're doing something they love, they're satisfying a need like every good business does, I think then that's the purpose of our job. And then it's like, okay, we're the training wheels. Now go and ride the bike. <laughs> Full of yes, analogies yes. today. I love it. And you used a real estate analogy earlier, and I'm going to be asking you about your your oh, yes. mogul building <laughs> oh, moment. But yeah, I feel like it's my job to see people's genius. Like I feel yeah. like it's my job to reflect back to people like you're amazing and to see the potential in people so that they can step into that version, yes. that best version of themselves. And you're right. It's incredibly hard to do that yourself for a million different reasons. So I love yes. that so much. So how does your knowledge in branding, so for those that don't know, and you can fill in more of the details, but you've been investing in rental properties and you've been making this 
them this entire experience as yes. opposed to just these four walls. And I know that comes from your branding expertise. What's been your strategy? What's that experience been like? Okay. So I realized, I would say around the time of the pandemic, because I bought a house in 2019. And then in 2020, I realized that I was on the lucky end by chance that I was in a business or a brand that was actually fairly untouched by the pandemic. Yeah. I'm used to recording for YouTube or for online stuff, so I don't even say COVID. I'm on a, we're on a podcast oh, yeah. now, so I can say it, but now I'm used to like <laughs> using other words to allude to it for fear that an algorithm will go, no, misinformation, don't listen to him. Um, that was funny. I just realized that as I was telling the story, but I realized, I think, in the pandemic that that was just by chance. I mean, it's not that I'm any better mm -hmm. than the restaurant or the gym down the street. It's yeah. just sheer luck that something in the world happened and didn't rough me up in the process. Mm -hmm. And what that did was it, it reminded me that I needed to do more in terms of making an effort to diversify my income streams. Even if they're not significant, I just need to have yeah. a few things cooking at once in case someone severs one of my legs. Because you can't plan... You know, you can't plan for someone to take a limb. Obviously, more analogies here in business, but like <laughs> none of us saw that coming and you can't necessarily do anything about it. So I think it reminded me, even though it didn't impact me directly, it was kind of this shakeup of holy crap, what am I doing if someone takes my main or if something impacts my mainstream of income. So that being said, I did I did buy this house in 2019 and it was really, Kay, you mentioned it, it was just an excuse for me to enjoy interior design because it's a huge inspiration <laughs> for my projects. If you look at our design aesthetic, in fact, my designer that's worked me for eight years is trained as an interior designer. And Lauren, my business okay. partner, loves interior design. I love interior design. My mom went to school to be an interior designer. So it's just like in my world. And uh, when I bought this house, I thought, well, it can't be hideous because nothing Phil Palin does can be hideous. That's not on brand. So we made it cute. We made it cute. We made it an experience. <laughs> and I realized in the middle of the process, I thought for our particular renter, it's not someone who's living there, it's short term. We are 25 minutes from Disney World. And if anyone has been to Disneyland or Disney World, you know that that's an experience in itself. Everyone wants to stay in a Disney hotel, right? I mean, mm -hmm. that's part of the experience, but they are so crazy expensive yeah. that I thought, well, what if we create an experience for a family that is an extension of the theme park. It still has the same energy, but it's not lame. I don't want like character <laughs> themed rooms. That's lame. Right. But I want like <laughs> just something that feels light and nice and awesome. And so we really put some effort without spending a ton of money. We were responsible. We put some effort into the design of it. We were upgraded to Airbnb plus, which really helps me out, nice. continues to help me out today. And real estate in Florida, like other places, has skyrocketed. So I refinanced the house a few months ago, took the equity from the house, used it as the down payment for the house that was for sale across the street that I bought. And so now I have two houses that are perfectly symmetrical across the street from each other. And you know more than anyone about how much satisfaction that gives me. Yes. The symmetry of it all. <laughs> Oh, man. And of course, they'll have like elements that tie them together, I'm sure. Too. Thank you for Just, asking. Thank you for yes. asking. People love the wallpaper in house number one. We call that yeah. 126. That's the address. 126 has this amazing geometric wallpaper in the dining room, and it's pink and gray and white and adorable. Uh, <laughs> PhilPallon.house, by the way, if anyone's wanting a visual for this, PhilPallon.house mm -hmm. to see that wallpaper. And people love this wallpaper. So we decided, well, we can't do exactly the same thing at the house across the street. It would be kind of boring to keep it exactly the same. So let's be inspired by what's working well, like we do in branding. Mm -hmm. I got the same wallpaper, but in blue. So the theme of the house across the street is more blue. The first one is pink. 126 is pink. 147 is blue. <laughs> same wallpaper, but blue, gray. It's awesome. And then I, of course, because I'm obnoxious, <laughs> I have my logo in the living room and in the on sign. And I just love it. <laughs> Amazing. Quick break to self-sponsor my own podcast. Thank you so much for the privilege. 
Today's episode is sponsored by the Brand Clarity Collective. The Brand Clarity Collective is my most powerful offer yet, where we multiply a mentorship platform by a mastermind. You get an all access pass to all of my best brand building curriculum, plus a mastermind community of fellow smart, ambitious, driven entrepreneurs like yourself to connect with, collaborate with, and to learn from. You can learn more about the Brand Clarity Collective by visiting my website, kputnam.com, and it's right there on the homepage. All right, let's get back to the interview. Since you're a brand strategist and you've thought about this deeply, how would you define your own brand? Like what is the Phil Palin brand? What does it stand for? This actually came up in conversation yesterday on a call with a new client where we were presenting the strategy after doing a brand audit. And Mm -hmm. we said to him, our favorite thing about our business is the fact that it attracts such high quality people like him. When people like that find me and then hire me, I'm like, oh my God, that is more valuable to me than any monetary amount. When the right client finds me and says, what you do resonates with me, let's work together. I'm like, that is the highest compliment. So I think every year in business, business gets easier And Mm -hmm. I know that's kind of maybe controversial to say, but I'm not interested (laughs) like other business owners in scaling, in hiring a huge team and selling a business. For me, it's more about enjoying the work that I'm doing and understanding that, yeah, there's probably a ceiling or a threshold in which I can work or my small team can work until I start to grow. I don't really want to grow. I don't really want more adult responsibilities, Kay. I'm really happy with where I am. I don't really need to make more money. I, I mean, I'm happy to make money in new in new ways. I don't want the business to grow and I don't want to experience stress for the sake of making more money. I'm just not interested in that. So yeah. for me, I guess my brand certainly resonates with my ideal client, which is what I've been trying to do for 10 years. And so any little indication that that is happening is a huge win for me. And that's you know helping people and companies, but mostly people when they've reached a certain level of success on their own and need someone to hold that mirror, need some help to Mm. build something to show for their next set of business goals. And I, I, I keep that person in mind when I'm recording a podcast, writing an email blast, sending an email to one person. That is the person I'm speaking to. And that is the person I think in a a decade that I have attracted. And that is a measure of success for me. Can you pinpoint any part of your brand that you think is especially magnetic to that person? I think we have a pretty strong portfolio and that's Mm -hmm. tough in itself. I've had so many iterations of how to show my work over the years. Yeah. Not just in quality, but now quantity. We spent on our last website, which I published about two years ago and have made minor updates to it, but it's working well for us. I I think we spent 315 hours, but who's counting me (laughs) on that? And a lot of those hours were me trying to figure out how do I convey a project to someone on a web page? So it went from beautiful pictures of their brand identity to then challenging myself going, that's a small part of this picture. How do I convey the whole picture? So it was, you know, still it's, it's, it is always a challenge because there is a certain amount of, I don't know, sometimes our work lacks tangible evidence beyond, you know, the brand itself showing up, I think is always a measure Mm -hmm. of success, but it's hard to show our work in visuals. And I think visuals are required for someone to feel confident in hiring you without having to have that in-person conversation for five hours. You know, it's almost (laughs) like, how do you use the internet to convey that you are trustworthy and that you've done for someone else, what you're capable of doing for them? I would say Mm -hmm. that work has paid off even not necessarily in quantity. I don't have a ton of website traffic on every single project, but I think people see the work that we've done for other people, not just on my website, but even, you know, called out in the footer of a website, people see the work we've done and go, oh, this is different. Oh, this is really good. Oh, this is really thorough. This is really impressive. Let me go see what they're all about. Oh, great. 
they specialize in personal branding, this is who I need. I think so. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's the, the, I guess you're asking really good questions, by the way. It's making me realize our, our decision to go all in on personal branding is paying off now because it's exactly the type of client we're attracting. And isn't that magical? I remember staring at the draft of our homepage before we click publish. Lauren, my business partner, and I going, oh, man, this is kind of risky. Do we go all in on yes. personal branding? <laughs> or do we, are we leaving out the startups and the corporate clients that have lots of money? And the magic of speaking specifically to your audience, I think we're, we're reaping the benefits of that and having a, a good portfolio. Yeah. I often think about that fact that like when you do a brand well, it creates this momentum and it creates long-term momentum over time. It's so hard to quantify that and to yeah. like package that up into a cute little bow but we'll keep trying. And I think you guys are doing a really, really fantastic job of that. Your work is exceptional. Thank you. Yes. Oh, the key I, to that, Kay, I, is hiring people that are better than you because I do not do all mm. of it. And <laughs> my, I, I, when I reflect, like I think my mm. most important business was realize, or my most important moment in business was realizing this is not going to go very far if Phil Palin is the graphic designer Mm self-taught hobby-based graphic designer, you better realize, you know, that if you want to grow a business, you need to guide the business and really focus on your strengths, your genius, as you said earlier. Mm -hmm. For me, that's educating. It's teaching. It's warming people up. It's opening the deal. I'm not even in charge of closing the deal because this would become a charity (laughs) if that was the case. I'm terrible with that stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> terrible with it. You know, so I focus on what I'm good at and I get plugged into projects. There's still things that I, I love to do. I love to make websites. I love to design websites. I absolutely love it. And so that's the part of the project that I'm more involved in. But by that point, I lean on my team to write mm-hmm. copy. Photographers take photos that we need for the brand. Brand identity gets designed with my team. Obviously, I have input, but unless there's a problem, I typically yeah. stay out of it. And then I pretend I'm Picasso and bring all of these pieces that my team have worked together, like paint on a canvas. I bring it all together in the website stage. And that's really fun. And I don't think I'll ever stop doing Mm. that. I love that. It's such a good reminder that you don't have to do what everybody else says that you must do to be an important CEO or to grow in a specific way. How else have you just gone in your own way when you're building this business? When have you gone against conventional advice? I do not pay a lot of attention to what other people are doing. Maybe I'm lucky because I seem to have a constant flow of interest or client or projects, things going on, but I do not pay attention to what other people are doing. I get inspired by what other people are doing. You are one of my sources of inspiration, YouTube, (laughs) Pinterest. You're the queen of Pinterest. Mm -hmm. You know, so I get, I, I keep like, I love when my friends pop up. But I don't really look closely at what other people are doing. I try to stay in my own lane. I do save sources of inspiration. Like your YouTube thumbnails are so freaking beautiful. Mine still are not quite there yet. But you're my source of inspiration on beautiful YouTube thumbnails. But seriously, I don't pay attention. I don't have a mentor per se. I have smart people that I'll talk to. But I don't have a formal mentor. I don't read. Uh, I had These are just props back here. I don't, I mean, I'll flip through a book (laughs) or I'll put it in the back of my Zoom setup because it looks nice. But I don't read books. Are you kidding me? I'd rather go to the pool and tan. I am not like, I do not have the attention span to read. So those are things that I think people are like, oh, take time to read a book or, oh, you know, make sure you have a mentor. It's really important to have a mentor. I don't have any of that crap. I just do my job. (laughs) That's it. Focus on my to-do list and don't work that hard, to be honest. (laughs) I don't. (laughs) I'm intentional about my time. You know, this week I'm working really hard because I'm traveling next week. So the days are long, but the work is fulfilling and I'm not complaining. I love it. Heck yes. This is one of the things that I love about you. And I feel like in like internet business years, you are a grandpa. And I say that with love because yeah. you have made this into such a sustainably growing company that doesn't take over your life. Right. What do you attribute to that sustainability? I mean, maybe it's those things that you just said, but is there anything else? For me, it's been really important to have someone else in the business. I, mm. you know, my name is slapped on everything, but I actually contribute. Oh, it's amazing. 
yeah, I contribute, I'd say less probably than others to that because I've hired smart people and I've hired passionate people and I've hired people that trust me and just, you know, I maintain a good relationship with them. But you have to be able to identify other people's genius and figure out how to plug them into your business. And it's really hard to find those people. So when you do find those people, you have to keep them happy. Yeah, I can't take a lot of credit for that. I think the people around me also know it's important to me and I appreciate that. I don't like being told when to work. I can work with deadlines, mm-hmm. but I I have a threshold. I have a threshold. It's like when I reach a certain point, I'm like, okay, I am checking out and you are not going to get anything value from me for the next day or two. And that's yeah. just what's important to me. So really business can be whatever you want it to be. I think so long as you're rooted in offering a product or a service that people really need. And I think if you really constantly approach that with humility and never become a know-it-all, always remain curious about what it is that people really need. What is keeping people up at night this year Mm. versus last year? I mean, right now, if you remain constantly curious about that, you do this exceptionally well. Okay, so for all the cool things that I've done, I've done lots of cool things, but you have so incredibly dominated, I think, in courses and programs and launches. That's really a world that I have dabbled in a little bit, but I've never had huge traction there. I've you know, focused more on one-on-one and then now starting to do brand partnerships, but launches and programs, I think that's something you do really well. That's definitely an area of genius, being able to offer an experience or a program that helps someone help themselves with your framework is something you do that's very unique and very special. And I think you know that you've identified that and you've leaned into it. You've, you've achieved great success with that, which is really super cool. I love you so much, Phil Pellin. (laughs) Words of affirmation are my love language. So I am eating you up. Thank you so much. I feel like I've learned so much from you, even from afar. Like we've had the amazing opportunity of actually spending time together too. I feel like I learned more in those three or four days that we spent together than from a lot of the formal educational experiences that I've done. So if you aren't reading books, if you don't have a mentor, how are you so dang good at business? Like, <laughs> how are you <laughs> such a genius? Because I feel like it goes down so many levels. Like, you are just a smart human. So, where I, does that come from? Well, thank you. I, I'm not really the type to like flip open a book, but I do stay fairly well read on like current events or I'll read mm-hmm. blogs. You know what? YouTube has helped me, it's forced me or kept me accountable in growing my knowledge in useful areas, digital marketing or branding. When I'm creating a YouTube video, it's not solely about what I know. Sometimes I'll tackle a topic that I know is going to force me to have to do some research and to think critically about a topic that I wouldn't otherwise do. But I would say clients, working one-on-one with clients, people gripe and complain about it. And and for me, yes, it's not perfect all the time, but having to work with someone and having to be accountable to someone that forces me to do something. And I find Mm. that when clients challenge me, it makes me better when they say, yes, I like this, but I want it to be a little bit different or yes, I like this, but what if we did this? And I'm like, Oh, I didn't think of that. This is why this is a collaboration. I would say that the client work keeps me in the trenches to constantly learn research, seek out new solutions for new challenges. And I would say that in the way that you say, like, you know, you've learned from me, I've learned from you. Sometimes it's more, what we learn from others is almost more important than what you would learn in a typical education. Yes, yes, yes. If you could plant a seed, like a, some belief or some kernel of knowledge into everybody, what would you want everybody to know? that self-awareness can lead you to a happier life in that this constant pursuit of discovery, what is it I love to do on this earth? What do I absolutely love to do? So much so that if I didn't need to work a day in my life, it's still what I would do 
still what I would choose to do with my time. I wrap that up as like self-awareness, the awareness of where you're strong, what makes you awesome, your genius, borrowed that from you. Um, the, just the, the self-awareness, I think, can lead you into a career, into a brand that is so fulfilling. And so it's almost like mm -hmm. your question led me to a bigger question, which is like, when I think about my purpose on the earth or my purpose in business, it's really to help people actualize a career or a brand that's fulfilling, that satisfies mm -hmm. them and in, in turn satisfies everyone around them or their, their target market. That's super cool. So I would say the, the seed I would plant is if you're unhappy in your business or your job, that can be changed. It can be changed in the pursuit, the journey, not necessarily the arrival at, I don't know if you ever arrived there, but in this journey of this, this, this pursuit of self-awareness, I think it can lead you to a happier life. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's such a privilege to do this work too, because I feel like we get to both be a witness to that and to facilitate that on some level. I think we get to help people become more self-aware yes. so that they can express themselves more authentically. It's the coolest job ever. How cool is it for me opinion. to describe my life's purpose and then for that purpose to be so aligned with what I do for a living? That's really yes. cool. I, I want that for everyone. Yeah. Yeah. One final question. I feel like, I feel like you are continually trying new things. Mm -hmm. I feel like you are continually saying yes to really interesting opportunities. And I don't even know where those opportunities come from, but I feel like one thing has just led to the other for you. Would you say that that's true for your success and how you go about business? Yes. Sometimes I say yes to a fault. If you ask anyone close to me, <laughs> they're like, please stop saying yes to things. <laughs> Sometimes I say yes and I regret it. I go, oh God, what have I signed up for? It looks at calendar today. Oh boy. But yeah, it's just part of my personality to like try new things. I have a very short attention span. And normally that might be characterized as a fault, but in my job, I think it actually makes me better at what I do because I'm able to craft yeah. something that grabs attention and the grabbing yeah. of attention is really important. So I take one of my faults and spin it on its head and actually make it a positive. But yes, I say yes to a lot of things. I like to try new things. I have a very short attention span. So I need to be constantly challenged or almost like constantly entertained by new things. Part of why I love mm -hmm. to travel is like, I like to be in uncomfortable, new, exciting surroundings. I like new culture. I love good food and I love to drink. So I need that newness. I get excited by that newness in life and in business. So right now, I mean, it was one of your first questions right now. I'm really excited about sponsored content and brand partnerships yeah. and how that's letting me use some of my best skills as a leader, or as a business person. And then next year, it'll probably be something new. I don't even know what that's going to be, but it's constantly changing. And that is very typical of me. What a fun way to do business. And what a great reminder to take a look at yourself, that self-awareness we talked about and recognize what your strengths are, like we talked about earlier, but maybe also what your faults are, quote unquote, Faults. Yes. Because if you just work with them, life gets easier. Yes. <laughs> you don't have to be miserable. You can create, especially as an entrepreneur, you get to create a business that is of service to whoever you uniquely are. I love yes. that about you. So. Oh, well, thank you. And you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Phil. You are amazing. Thank you so much for taking the time. Where can people find you? So we mentioned philpallon.house for those beautiful yeah. rental properties that you have. <laughs> Where else do you have all of your genius? philpallon.co is probably the, the hub of most of it. I would say if you want to drop a DM, if you took the time to listen to this, I'd love to hear from you. Say hello. Instagram DMs is definitely the place where you'll get me faster than my inbox. What else? YouTube. I'm yes. publishing typically twice a week, Wednesday and Saturday on the platform. And that's a fun way where I'm constantly sharing new things that I learn. I've got an email list. Oh, you know what actually is even better than my email list is my freebies section. philpallon.co slash freebies. 
One freebie actually was very much inspired by you, the exploration of the different, what do you call them? The archetypes. Archetypes. Thank you. I was going to say prototypes. That was not the right word. A few (laughs) years ago, I thought, wow, I don't really use these in business, but Kay does. So I'm going to actually use the process of creating a freebie to immerse myself in it. And that was really Mm -hmm. cool to explore. So one of my freebies is about archetypes, but my best, my, I guess my most downloaded freebie now over 20,000 times, which blows my mind, a hundred evergreen content ideas. That is my, my freebie that has been downloaded the most. And I've got, I think at least 10 or 12 on there that people can check out, which are like useful worksheets, eBooks and stuff that you can just download for free. Amazing. I feel palin.co slash freebies. We will put it in the show notes, in the descriptions, all of the places. Thank you, Phil. Thank you. Thank Thank you you for having me. You're (laughs) one of my fave peeps and we will coordinate. We will actually coordinate a time that we get to get together in real life. Yes. ASAP. Let's make that happen. Love it. Thank you for having me. You're the best. Amazing. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. I hope you enjoyed Phil as much as I do. If you haven't yet, subscribe to the show and I would so appreciate if you left a rating and or review. This helps entrepreneurs like you discover the show and learn what they need to learn to be able to attract their ideal clients to their brand on a emotional gut level. And if you would like to be more of yourself in your brand and in your business, great place to start is by identifying your top brand archetype. If you'd like to do that, head over to my website and take the brand personality quiz. It's kputnam.com slash quiz. 100% free and I deliver a ton of valuable resources after you take the quiz. Make sure you connect with me and Phil on Instagram. Send us a DM. Let us know what you thought of this episode. My Instagram handle is kputnam. Phil's is Phil Palin. We are easy to find. We're good, good brand building marketers and entrepreneurs. And I can't wait to hear from you.